And we're back on Second Street talking about education reform at the K-12 level. We're talking with Catherine Cavanaugh from Cardis and Paige McPherson from the Fraser Institute. Catherine, I'm wondering if we can ask you to give us sort of a breakdown. When people talk about independent private schools, we hear those terms. What do they mean? And then secondly, what types of government support is out there? Can you give us a range of what's happening in, in Canada when it comes to those those options? Yeah. So at least here in Alberta, independent schools and private schools are the same thing. Um, These are schools that are um, created and run by community uh, organizations, parents, um, directly in response to the learning needs that they saw in their own children or in their own community. Um, They they do receive oversight by the government. Um, In Alberta, again, there are there's accredited independent schools which you know follow. the Alberta curriculum. They have certified teachers. Um, they they uh, issue like the standardized testing, like diploma exams and provincial achievement exams. Um, and then there are registered schools, which have a lot more flexibility and a lot less oversight. And those ones receive no funding, whereas um, accredited funded schools receive the seventy percent funding I mentioned earlier. Um, so th- that that's what the schools are. Um, and in terms of other provinces, Alberta is the one that funds the most. I know in Ontario, um, independent schools receive no provincial funding. Um, and we really see that in the difference of tuition fees. So whereas I would say average tuition fees for uh, independent schools in Alberta are probably in the three to $6,000 range. Um, in Ontario, it can be mm. potentially three times that. Um, so the government funding really does make a difference in making these types of schools accessible and available to parents. So, Paige, what would be the uh, what would be the pros and the cons of governments funding uh, independent schools, um, or even maybe parents to send their kids to independent schools? Well, the biggest pro is that um, it makes these options more accessible across the income spectrum. Because, you know, wealthy families will always have school choice. If you have enough money, you can send your child to an independent school. You can choose to have one parent stay home and homeschool your children. Um, If you don't have enough money, then you're sort of out of luck. If there's no school choice policies in your province, you're constricted to whatever the government system is. And kids, as we know and have discussed, are not one size fits all. The government public school system tends to be one size fits all. And that puts kids um, who are from middle or lower income families at a disadvantage. So that's the biggest um, pro. Of course, there's a lot of other um, benefits inherent with competition where you have uh, charter schools and independent schools become center for innovations. Uh, they're trying new things. And uh, and this sometimes drives government public schools to do the same uh, in order to compete um, and, uh, and compete for those students and those dollars uh, from the government when the money is following the student. The cons that exist, I think, within the Canadian system are uh, that our own in, uh, Fraser Institute research shows that unfortunately in the provinces that do have school choice policies, independent schools tend to be more heavily regulated. So here in Nova Scotia um, and across Atlantic Canada, where there is no um, funding for independent schools, same as Ontario, as was mentioned, uh, schools tend to be less regulated um, than in provinces like Alberta and BC, Saskatchewan, Quebec, Manitoba, where there is funding for independent schools. That does not have to be the case when a a government decides to um, empower families with school choice policies and by funding independent school options. They don't need to add heavy handed regulations, but unfortunately, the reality um, is that they do. Um, And, you know, I think that there there's a lot of probably misconceptions tied in um, with educational choice policies. Um, the, the main one being that independent schools are elite, whereas our own research shows, um, and Cardis has done research to this effect as well, that the proportion of schools that do fit that sort of elite university prep school um, stereotype are, it's actually a very, very small proportion of independent schools on the landscape in these provinces. And the income profiles, especially when you remove those elite schools of the families that send their kids to government public schools versus the families that send their kids to independent schools, they're actually quite similar. So there's a lot of families that want access to these systems and make sacrifices in order to send their kids to them. Um, but without those school choice policies, it's simply not an option for many to afford. We, we only have a few seconds here, but the union say, no, we shouldn't fund independent schools. We should invest those dollars and improve public schools. What's your take on that? 
Well, um, charter schools and independent schools are uh, are not required to hire unionized teachers. So uh, fewer unionized teachers means fewer dues paid to the union. So you know, people can make up that what they 